Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with my live reaction for Tower of God Chapter 456, or what is it, Season 3, Episode 39. Uh, so yeah, super excited for this one, because I loved last chapter. Last chapter was so good. I think, I, I just, I feel like I haven't been this excited for Tower of God in a while. Like, I've loved, like, ever since Yama woke up last arc onward, I've really, really loved, and I feel like it's just kept getting better and better, but... Ah, just especially moving into this new arc has me really excited. I like the new art characters and the way that they've been presented. I like the setting for this. The idea that they're sort of just going there to try to get information from Kalavan, but we know that some sort of conflict is probably bound to pop off uh, between Kalavan and this hero who's sealed in the wall. The hero who's sealed in the wall has a really interesting story that ties into sort of the main plot going on with V and FUG and Arlen and all that, but it's also just a cool arc plot type thing too. So I'm really, really liking this setting and the idea that we're going into here. Uh, for the reviews on the last two chapters, I took notes on both of them today, and I'm recording this at like pretty much midnight on Sunday, so you'll be seeing this Monday morning, first thing, I'll probably post it as soon as I wake up in the morning, I'll edit it, throw together a thumbnail and all that, um... And then after that, I'll try my best to get those two reviews up, so you'll see them as soon as possible after this. But, um, yeah, super excited to read. So, uh, let's see what we, uh, see what we can get, uh, doing here. So, actually, we just went on mid-season break for The Walking Dead, and if you all don't know, I usually go and watch The Walking Dead with my family on Sunday nights, which is why I haven't been doing these live reactions on Sunday nights. That, and it's kind of like kind of a mess trying to be like, uh, let me record and then do all this stuff um, Sunday night. But since I'm not going to be going there and doing that anymore, uh, and I'll have Sunday nights pretty much free, I might start posting some of these reactions on Sunday nights. Uh, so don't be surprised if you start seeing them there instead of Monday mornings. Uh, I, I, I might at least start recording them Sunday nights and posting them earlier on Mondays. But either way, just wanted to say that before I forgot about it. But yeah, either way, let's get to reading. So we're we're cutting back in with the part where Calavan, Essence of Meathead, so amazing. I even said on Twitter, I unironically love Calavan at this point. Just having this character who's just waltzing around, just walking into people's houses like he owns the place, doing all this just meathead stuff. Like, well, I don't know how to talk other than by force. I am really just entertained by Calavan. So, it's really fun. Intruder, the intruders here call the guards. Don't get me wrong. And of course we saw this at the end of last chapter. I didn't do this to persuade you. I did it because of my own personal beliefs. But is this really the kind of peace your sister wanted? Mind your own business, she says. You don't exactly seem like the person who will bring us the peace my sister hoped for either. And he glances over. 52nd floor, the wall with the sleeping forget-me-not. Two. Behind the wall. Detention center for intruders. I should have just kept my mouth shut. I only mentioned I'm a Slayer candidate to try to persuade them, but I ended up getting us locked up. And I love, again, it's sort of something that's like not a really big thing, I guess, that's super noticeable all the time. Like, it's not a huge thing, but I like that ordinarily, if we went at most points in Season 2, it would be one of Bomb's allies saying something like this. Bomb, for a lot of Season 2, just kind of stayed silent and didn't really, like, talk a lot or get a whole lot of dialogue except for the occasional, like, good guy main character one-liners during fights. So I really like how just Bomb has been more talkative and charismatic in Season 3 so far. It's not your fault, Bomb. That might have killed you on the spot if you weren't a Slayer candidate. At least we made it past the wall safely, said Kuhn. True. You've got a point. Several hours earlier. Until we catch him and confirm that he's got nothing to do with you, we're locking you all up. There's no time to be fighting amongst ourselves. You have no idea how dangerous Kalavan is. Bomb. Kuhn. And then he whispers, Let's just do what they say for now. I don't think we'll be able to convince them anyway. You mean... They still think we're just ordinary regulars. Even if they lock us up, they won't be too hard on us. 
It's not like Calavan broke the seal yet anyway, so we've still got some time. We might as well just let them lock us up instead of fighting them here. Besides, we've got white, remember? We can escape any time we want. Alright. So I like this. We're doing this with some uh, sneakiness and some plans going on instead of just fighting their way through. We'll do as you wish. Good. Because I think delete is... Uh, delete's a job, or delete would probably get wrecked by any of them. Like, I know I'm, like, devaluing rankers really quickly after I said that rankers shouldn't be devalued for so long in the series, but this guy feels like just like a walking scrub to me for whatever reason. The present. As if Kalavan weren't enough of a problem, then it turns out not even the wall guards are on our side. This is going to be an uphill battle. It's not like we didn't see this coming. Don't worry about it. And we see, um, see Hatsu is training, and White thinks, is he a swordsman? If you keep training like that, you'll never get strong. And then he glances over. What? You're so focused on making a stronger sword that your whole body's all stiff. You look more like a farmer at work than a swordsman. You may be a great swordsman, but you've got no right to judge other people's sword skills. Sword skills? Is that what you call swinging a sword around like a lunatic? Watch me. Like this. Stronger, yet flamboyantly. Put your weight into it. You think a true swordsman can turn even a tree branch into a sword infused with... er... You think a true swordsman can turn even a tree branch into a sword infused with the spirit of the REA family. Don't be ridiculous. And then... He slices forward with his hand. He's got such power. Your sword doesn't need those silly sword skills of yours. What you're trying, er, what you're trying to teach to a mere sword. What are you trying? Okay, what are you trying to teach to a mere sword that can barely slash and stab? You don't, er, you don't even understand something as simple as slashing. If you, if you keep tensing your hand like that, you'll just wear down your blade. What matters isn't your style, it's the simple act of slashing and stabbing. The sword is just a sword. It's no good if you don't know how to use it. Take that stab I showed you just now, for example. If you can manage to copy even a tenth of that, I'd say you're more than strong enough. Honestly, pe er, seeing people like you really gets my blood boiling. You're lucky to have even gotten your hands on a decent sword, and you don't even have the talent to use it properly. Is he talking about my sword, Donghei? Puh. He's from the Arie family. He's mastered the art of sword fighting before he was even born, thinks Kuhn. Come to think of it, I suppose it's not really entertaining to see a kid with amazing skills and an incredible weapon. So, this is interesting that we've gotten Hatsu here learning more because of being around White. But also it's cool because White learned from Arie Hoden that no matter what he did, his sword skills would never be good enough unless he went out and got the power of a demon or whatever. So if even an REA family member as strong as Joaquin's sword skills aren't enough on their own, then just swinging a sword around really isn't enough in Tower of God without uh, doing something more with it, I guess, you know? Kalavan's here, somewhere, thinks Bomb swinging it around without even knowing how to use it properly. Is it because of the power of transformation I got from Doom? I can feel the powers within me stirring a bit more clearly. If I, er, if I do the best I can right now, will I be able to get anywhere near Kalavan? Are you anxious, says White. Why? You're afraid you'll freeze up when you see Kalavan. You may be growing very quickly, but compared to Kalavan, you're still nothing. But, there are ways of overcoming that gap a lot sooner than you think. Although you still won't beat him, of course. You have the power of the souls I gathered. I know you're hesitant about using that power. But, you've got both the right and the talent to command those souls. You've also got the strength to withstand the power. And you just recently found a way to make the power a reality. The fire's ready to be lit. No one knows what'll happen when the power begins blazing. I could teach you. How to light the fire, I mean. Okay, so I just assumed that the souls had already sort of become part of Bomb or just left off into the ether or whatever. But if they're still there, like kindling or fuel, then White would pretty much just be teaching him to use the soul power like he or Daniel used. 
Besides, I want to see you do it. Just let me know if you're interested. Hey, I'd better change the topic, thinks Coon. You know, about the hero stuck in here. That bastard. Don't you have any information about it? I thought you were a legendary slayer once. Hm, I looked into it. Legendary. I like the sound of that. But most of the information's gone, and it happened such a long time ago that it's hard to find any reliable sources. I did manage to figure out something, though. Then tell us, Mr. Legendary Slayer. After the long age of tower climbing, when Zahard and the Ten Family Leaders conquered the tower and rankers began appearing, finally King Zahard declared himself king of everyone and everything in the tower and started a war against his opponents. For a long time after that, the tower was divided by a war between those who supported Zahard becoming king and those who opposed it. History refers to this period as Genesis. But it was more of a time of war and slaughter than a time of Genesis. Of course, the greatest enemy of Zahard and the Ten Family Leaders at the time was FUG. But FUG is an organization formed based on very personal grudges. But at the times, be, er, but with the times being what they were, Zahard's opponents started rallying behind FUG. And in order to stand up to Zahard and the Ten Families, they had the most outstanding rankers from each country and each organization study with the masters at FUG and had them fight as a single team. Okay, so this is really interesting and makes sense with this whole anti-Zahard alliance, is FUG and the members of FUG all have really personal reasons to hate Zahard and the Ten Families, but there are also probably a lot of people out in the tower who don't have a reason to personally hate them, but also don't want this guy just coming in and saying, okay, I'm king of everything now. So those people who were like, yeah, we don't want this guy just coming in and saying he's king of everything, went to help FUG, who had personal grudges against them. Uh, but since the war has ended now, FUG might still hate them, but a lot of those people are probably like the people we saw at the workshop battle, where quietly they want FUG to stick it to Zahard, but, I mean, there's nothing they can do officially against the Empire. Um, but, either way, continuing and had them fight as a single team. One of the teams that emerged among the teams during Genesis was the team that managed to even assassinate the direct descendants of the previous generation of the Ten Family Leaders. What? Managed to assassinate direct descendants? Okay. This, I'm, I'm just wondering what Lines Translation's all about, because I don't know if we can trust this or not. Because, like, I don't understand. Previous generation of the leaders, I thought the leaders were just the warriors who came in to begin with. So, not sure. The Hidden Grove. Apparently two of the people trapped in the wall were a part of that team. Alright. The Hidden Grove. That's right. You probably know more about them than I do. Isn't that right, guide? <laughs> and Snowo just sitting there with them already. Yeah. Is that magic? Y you're the girl who was with the Elder. Okay, so she did just appear there. What are you doing here? How'd you get smaller? I'm a guide. Sneaking in here isn't that hard. You can get that small? Without the help of- or without the help of the administrator? Oh, of course she just compressed, probably. I came here because I had a feeling you guys would mess this up. Honestly, I'm still kind of pissed, but I'll let you off the hook for now. Just be grateful for that much. Nobody asked you to come here, thinks Coon. What's she so pissed about, thinks Rack? Now that you guys are involved in this, uh, I really don't like being near that guy. I feel like I should at least tell you a bit about the people sealed in the wall. Okay, so this is interesting. So still doesn't like being around Bomb because of uh, the way he's in a regular and it messes with the ability to sort of see the pads or whatever. It's like standing in front of Zahard. Okay, so Soho knows what it's like to stand in front of Zahard, apparently. Like how they ended up trapped in the wall, and why we don't want them to wake up, or why we don't want to wake them up. Yeah, because before it seemed like waking them up would be beneficial to Kelhelm, but he Kelhelm wanted them to rest in peace. So this it'd, it'd be good to get an explanation for that. But of course we're cut, cutting away. Sorry to call you so suddenly, Division Commander Chon Hee Ha. Okay, so she's still a Division Commander. S squadron Commander, I mean, C Calavan. Ar aren't you on an infiltration mission? How'd you call me with your pocket? Security doesn't seem very tight around here. 
too much pe er, too much peace ruins a lot of things. I'd better keep that in mind too. How are things going over there, sir? The squadron's moving in complete secrecy. It seems like they're going to defend something, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay. What's the new squadron commander like? I'm not really sure yet. He's hard to pin down. I see. I'll make sure I can rejoin the army as a regular soldier once this mission's over. Now, the main reason I called you. Is there any way to make a stubborn woman change her mind? What, a woman? That's right. That's why I called you. Hmm. Well, I know they say women know women best, but I've been so focused on getting stronger that I've never really thought about the differences between genders. I learned from my family that girls are meant for great things, so they shouldn't get caught up in the details too much. Still, whenever someone's been fixated on an idea for a long time, it usually means they've been waiting for something. Waiting? Yeah, sticking to their guns is a way of preparing themselves for a certain moment, which means as soon as something capable of changing your mind happens, you need to get the timing just right, Kalavan. Hmm, alright, thanks for the help. I, I'm glad I could be of service, Squadron Command. I mean Kalavan. Good luck, sir. Timing, huh? And now we're going back to, uh, Kane. Sis, I miss you. You've been gone for ages. I still don't know why, er, I don't know why I still miss you like crazy all the time. Open the door. Teb, Miss Kane, I know you're in there. And the door creaks open. What are you doing here so late at night, Teb? Why are the soldiers here? What the heck? Ah, what the hell's gotten into you, Teb? And they knock her back into her house. Miss Kane, I'm so disappointed in you. The townspeople who saw you, er, the townspeople who saw you speaking with the intruder earlier today are protesting to demand that the guards arrest you. They claim you spoke with the intruder to try and set the heroes free. Is all that true? What? She's surprised. Of course not, Teb. I've been hanging on for my sister's sake for ages. Why would I suddenly go and do something like that? I don't know, but the point, er, but the point is that the townspeople are suspicious of you. Honestly, we can only take so much of this, Miss Kane. Please, just forget about the past and move on. The townspeople get anxious every time you visit the tower. If it weren't for you, there's no way the seal would ever be broken. The townspeople all want you gone. They want me gone. The people living here are either the descendants of the people whose lives my sister saved all those years ago, or losers who came crawling into this place after being hunted down by the other groups in the tower. If it weren't for me and my sister protecting them, people would already be dead. And yet they want me gone? This isn't right. The moment she's been waiting for. Maybe. This isn't peace. This is it. Okay? This isn't the peace my sister gave her life for. In the past, the end of Genesis. Damn it. I know we killed their kids, but how could they send someone like that? Those ten family leaders have got some nerve. Near the end of the war between Zahard and his opponents, one of the lost moments of history. Alright, so this is part of that team we saw before, I think. This is interesting, the one dude looks like a moth version of Rack. And one looks similar to Kel Helm. I wonder, actually, because they have a bow looking thing too, could Kel Helm have been part of this uh, group whose name I forgot already? I'll have to go back and look at it. But if so, maybe that's why Kelhelm wants them to rest in peace, because they're his teammates. I sure wish the ten family leaders had someone like your father. Okay. All Kun Edwan ever needed was booze and women, even if someone killed his own kids. Okay. Spear bearer of the er spear bearer on the team on the Hidden Grove team, Taro York. Right? What the hell do you mean? He's the worst kind of person to have as a father. Spear bear on the Hidden Grove team. Kun Hind Look. Okay, so no, it isn't Kelhelm then. Alright. Forget me not, it's coming your way. Keep it down, I'm trying to concentrate. Wave controller on the Hidden Grove team. Kane's older sister, Doan. Nickname, Forget Me Not. Alright, so we're actually seeing her now. Hey, watch out in front of you. You're in trouble. Hmm? Oh my god. One of the 23 beasts of the Lopobia family, currently the symbol of the 20th branch. 
ancient odd-eyed giant cobra. It's freaking huge. Shut up and do something. And we see this huge blooming of flowers all around. Power of the Great Flower. Bring us protection and our enemies' death. Flower Shinsu Control Skill. Sent to Forget-Me-Nots. Wide Range Skill. Flower Garden. And we see just this massive, massive Shinsu ability. Three months before Dewan was sealed in the wall. Okay, the some of the pacing was a little bit interesting and kind of weird there toward the end. This is really, really cool, though. I'm really loving this arc so far. We're learning a lot of cool new things. Um, I'm really curious because there's a lot we still don't know, so I can't really speak on it too much. I feel like some of the stuff, what they meant, I think, by that one line was that they killed, like, some of the first children that the Ten Family Heads had, but some things, like... The English seemed a little bit wonky and a little bit off in some of these sentences this chapter, so it might be one of those things where I'll have to read through a few more times, try to maybe fill in some blanks myself or see where they might have messed up, um, and definitely pay attention to the blog and any corrections that anybody makes, uh, because the translation, it's been seeming fine usually, except for, of course, the typos and misspellings and stuff. Uh, but other than that, it seemed fine for the most part. Uh, but this chapter, things just seemed a little bit wonky here and there. So it'll be something where I'll just have to pay attention and uh, figure anything out. But yeah, this is interesting. Uh, what was the name? Taro York or something like that? Or Yeah, I think that was it. I'm interested in them, because like I said, they look like a moth version of Rack, kind of. Uh, but yeah. Either way, going to end this here. Two reviews up after this um, as soon as possible, and then I'll review this probably like Wednesday or something. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you like the video, comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of this week's chapter, what you thought of my thoughts and reaction and all that. Subscribe for more Tower of God and much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you up to there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. And if you'd like a link to the Discord server, just ask and I can give you a link. It's free and open for anyone. Also, if you want to help support the channel to keep these going week to week, then, uh, yeah, it's patreon.com slash haku of the tubes, or a link will be in the description. But that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.